a generation of new energies which allow for joyous and convincing proclamation of the gospel. So the two, I don't think, are incompatible. The opening paragraph of um, the document, we find the words of Jesus in commissioning of the gospel to proclaim the good news. You're familiar with these words and I mentioned earlier today. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always to the close of age. It's quite ironic that I, I often use that particular phrase when I was teaching catechists in my previous life in the Diocese of Broken Bay because I found the order inspirational. So I'm going to focus on that order and pick up something from the document uh, to do with that order. In, in 2011, these words are as relevant as they were nearly 2,000 years ago. Uh, they are a source for renewal, redirection and new energy in proclaiming the gospel in the 21st century. I think those words are the good news that we need to focus on. So the first word, I'm not going word by word either, um, the first word is go. A new evangelization is synonymous with mission requiring the capacity to set out, to set out anew, go beyond boundaries and broaden horizons. That's in paragraph 10. The document reminds us to be a Christian and to be church is being missionary. We are sent forth, as were the original disciples, to proclaim Jesus Christ to the world. A reassessment of our experience and attitudes concerning evangelization will lead to an improvement of our practice and approach to proclamation, allowing us, as it says in paragraph 2, to ascertain the calibre of our faith, to determine our sense of feeling and being Christians and disciples of Jesus and our being witnesses filled with the Holy Spirit. In paragraph 10 it says, the energy that comes from loving one's faith implies that bearing witness to it bringing it to others and allowing others to participate in it. So it's the energy that comes from our faith. Such a reassessment involves placing at the centre of our local communities the Word of God and Eucharist and reading the signs of the times, all discussed in paragraphs 15 and 16 of the document. Now, being a witness was mentioned by Trish and it's mentioned earlier today as well. A particular question in this process would be, what does being a witness mean today? We are encouraged as educators to be witnesses. I teach uh, students who will be educators, uh, religious educators in, in Catholic schools one day, and they are encouraged to be witnesses. But what does it mean? Chapter 16 of the document says, this is the manner of acting, of acting that ought to be all-encompassing, including our way of thinking, our deeds, individual conduct, public witness, the interior life of our communities and their efforts of being missionary. Loving one's faith, bringing faith to others, allowing others to participate. Being a witness is a way of thinking. What we do, privately and publicly, nourished by the interior life of communities. Being a missionary is education and dedication to the poor. To actively take place in a conversation, or as the word we've used today is dialogue. Bringing the Christian gift of hope. The document also talks about this is where the pictures come in for the visual learners because we thought by this stage visual learners would be sinking uh, under the table with all the words that have been thrown at you. Um, imaging a space for new evangelisation will give us new energy too. And I like the term courtyard of the Gentiles which Sandy mentioned before. An important consideration in the generation of a new energy 
in, for evangelisation in the 21st century is imagining a space or place for all involved to meet, in which people might have some way to latch on to God without knowing him and before gaining access to his mystery. A real vir uh, or virtual courtyard or marketplace that creates opportunities for dialogue, verbal and non-verbal, between evangelisers and educators as witnesses, and those of other Christian traditions, other faiths, and those who are alienated from religion or no religion as well. So how has the, court, the idea of the courtyard of the Gentiles been developed in our local churches? The next part of the commissioning is to make disciples. And to make disciples, we baptise and we teach, as Jesus commanded us. So there's a need for ongoing catechesis. I had um, the privilege a few years ago to go to a week-long course in the United States which was entitled Making Disciples. And when the bishop asked me to go to this, I thought, it sounds like making a cake or something like that. And I wondered what it was going to be. And it was quite an amazing experience. And I would propose in my recommendation that we rediscover mystagogy, a time characterised by the experience of the sacraments and entry into community. Now, we commonly call that the time between Easter and Pentecost and it's what the newly baptised undergo. Sometimes we even stretch it to a year. But Mr. God is about becoming an adult Christian, and many writers would say we spend a whole lifetime doing that. So our lifetime is Mr. Godji. Leading those who have been initiated into a mystery, into its deeper meaning and significance for their lives. We have all been initiated. We all need to be constantly led. So when we make disciples, we proclaim to seekers, we provide initiatory catechesis, ongoing catechesis. We make intentional disciples who become apostles and they go out. So uh, Peter, in the drop the net experience, became a disciple but he spent his whole life becoming a saint. And this particular course talked about something that we aim for, which is intentional discipleship. This is where the energy comes from. When a community promotes models and intentionally supports outstanding achievements in its members, people are transformed. They begin to see themselves differently and the world differently. What they assume to be normal and possible begins to change. We have a new energy. The result? Ordinary people begin to imagine, aspire to and accomplish extraordinary things. So can we build a culture of intentional discipleship in our parishes and in our schools? Can we enable large members, numbers of um, ordinary Catholics I include myself in that, to imagine, aspire to and seek to follow Christ as disciples and become apostles of extraordinary influence, to give them a new energy. And Pope Benedict says, there is nothing more beautiful than to be surprised by the gospel, by the encounter with Christ. There is nothing more beautiful than to know him and to speak to others of our friendship with him. So in that surprise that we have is an ongoing, lifelong commitment, we will have the energy to evangelise. Thank you.